Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So we will be continuing with the Strivers A to Z DSA course just in case you're for the first time here and you don't have any idea about what this is all about. You can definitely check it out from the link in the description. And yeah, till now I have covered up till this particular problem. Now in this video, I'll be covering up the problem reverse pairs. Now this is a hard problem. So please, please make sure that you should have seen the problem count inversions and you should also be knowing about merge sort in detail so if you do not know about this pause this video right away there's a link in the description go back and watch these couple of videos and then you can come back and resume this video so what does the problem state the problem states you will be given an array of integers and what you have to find is the number of pairs and what should the bear do the left element should be greater than twice of the right element let me give you an example so if I take 2, which is basically this one, then I can say that if I take 6 from the right, which is basically this one, 6, 2 can be a bear. Why? Because 6 is greater than twice of 2. It is. As well as I can say 9, 2 is a pair. As well I can say 12, 2 is a pair. As well I can say 19, 2, 25, 2, 40, 2. All of them are possible. But something like, 9 comma 6 is not possible. Why? Because 9 is not greater than twice of 6. Got that? Even something like 12 comma 6 is not a pair. Why? Because 12 is not greater than twice of 6. So the key idea over here is it has to be greater than twice of and the problem count inversions. If you have seen the previous video in the problem count inversion, the problem was array of i should be greater than array of j so we were able to solve this problem but this is slightly different we have to solve it keeping in mind that it is greater than twice of so any left element should be greater than the right element by twice that is what the problem states over here if i have to count the number of pairs uh, for two all of them can form a pair which is basically i can get six pairs for six uh, all of them can form a pair these people cannot so I'll get three more for nine this cannot this can this can this can so another three for twelve this cannot this can this can so another two for nineteen this cannot but this can so another one and then for twenty five this cannot so we are pretty much done with it so the number of pairs that you'll get for this one is fifteen and I want you to return the number fifteen I don't want the best. I just want the number, which is 15. That is what the problem states. So if the problem comes up in an interview, what is the first solution that you'll give to the interviewer? That is definitely the brute force solution. So what is the extreme naive solution that comes to your brain? It's like, okay, I need the I, I need the J. Basically, I need a pair. So can I generate all the pairs? How can you generate all the pairs? It's very simple. You stand at 40 and you go through all the numbers on the right. You stand at 25 and you go through all the numbers on the right. You stand at 19 and you go through all the numbers on the right. You stand at 12 and you go through all the numbers on the right. Right? So this is what I'll do. I'll probably go through every number. So that's basically i equal to 0 to n minus 1. So this i will be like first over here, then it will go here, then it will go here, then here, then here, and keep on going. So whenever i is here, where should we start from? We should start from right of i. So it starts from 25, goes till 2. If we are at 25, it should start from here, go till here. So quite simple. So what I'll do is, I'll go ahead and run the G loop from I plus 1. And it'll again go until N minus 1. Very simple. And what will I write? If, I'll write the condition, if A of I is twice of A of J. If A of I is greater than twice of A of J, I will keep a counter, which will keep me a count. So initially counter can be 0. So I can complete these for loops. And whatever count is there after the finishing of the ith loop will be my answer. But what will be the time complexity of such an approach? Obviously, it will be big of n squared. Not exactly n squared, somewhere near about. Why? Because this is running for n times. And for the first time, this will run for these many times. For the next time, for these many times. Somewhere near about n. Near about, near about, not exactly. So thereby, the time complexity is big of n squared. What about the space complexity? The space complexity can be called as Bco of 1 because we are not using any external space. Obviously, over here, the interviewer will not be happy with the n squared and he'll ask you to optimize it. This is when we move to the optimal solution. So the last approach was taking n squared and we have to reduce it. So if we have to reduce it, 
it will be somewhere in login or be go off in. And that is something we are getting as a hint. So if you remember in the last problem, count inversions, we did take examples where I was taking two arrays. So let's for a moment, forget about this problem. Let's go to a problem where we have been given a couple of sorted arrays. Yes, if you see both of the arrays are sorted in an ascending order. So let's take this. And if I ask you for these couple of arrays, can you find me the number of pairs? Can you find me the number of pairs where if you take something from the left, that should be greater than whatever you're taking from the right array. For an example, if you take 21 from here, then you can pick up two and this can be a pair. 21 comma one can be a pair. 21 comma three can be a pair. But 21 comma 13 cannot be a pair because 21 is here. 13 is here. That's okay. But it's not greater than twice. So this cannot be a pair. Again, something like 6 and 25 cannot be a pair. Something like 1 and 9 cannot be a pair. Only pair is possible if something is from the left and something is from the right. Then only a pair is possible. Alright, so let's again go the same way as we moved in the count inversions problem. So we have two arrays. This one and this one. Both of them are sorted. So in the count inversions, what we did was we were basically uh, having a condition as array of i greater than array of j. So in a case where we were standing at 3 and we were standing at 6, we were sure enough, we were sure enough that if 3 and 6 are compared, 6 is greater than 3. So thereby, all the numbers, all the numbers can form a pair with 3. Why? Because 6 comma 3 can be a pair according to this condition. Similarly, 6 comma, uh, 13 comma 3 can be a pair, 21 comma 3 can be a pair, 25 comma 3 can be a pair. And that was only possible because this 3 was smaller than 6. Thereby, all the numbers on the right of 6 will always be greater than 3. That's why it was possible. And that's why we ended up taking the count 4 as the answer. Because if 3 can form a pair with 6, it can form with everyone. But over here, that condition or that process will not work. Why? Because over here, 6. I know 6 is uh, greater than 3. But I know 6 is not greater than twice of 3. Not. So 6 cannot form a pair. But 13 can, 21 can, 25 can. So you'll miss out. You'll miss out. You'll just take 3 and you'll move forward to 4. So you'll miss out on these pairs. The only reason it worked for this one is, it's very straightforward. If 6 forms, these will form. But over here you have a condition. You have a condition. Let me write the condition now. You have a condition of array of i greater than twice of array of j. So it doesn't matter if this one is forming a pair with this one or not. Because if 6 is not, the forward, like the next elements might be. So you will be missing it. Got it? We did not understand. Roll back. Watch it again. You will understand for sure. So we cannot apply a method where we say if 6 is forming a pair, and the others will because that doesn't work because if 6 doesn't form a pair the others might the others might so we will miss out so we'll try to apply some other logic understand the logic will be slightly different we'll try to stand over here and see who can like who can form a pair with 6 we will stand at 13 and we'll say who can form a pair we'll stand at 21 and we will say who can form a pair let's let's start and then we will try to optimize First, I'm standing at 6 and I'm asking you, which people can form a pair? You'll be like, 1 can, 2 can. So these two people will definitely form a pair with 6. Right? So let me write this. 6 can form a pair with 1, 2. Not with 3. Not with 3 because it is greater, not greater than equal to. Okay, let's go to the next. 13. Let's see for 13, who can form a pair? For 13, this can, this can, this can, this can, this can, this can. Every one of these can. So let's write that. For 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, and 5 can. Not 9, not 9. Okay, perfect. Let's move to the next, which is 21. For 21, which elements can? This can, this can, this can, this can, this can, this can, this can. Okay, can this flow? So, 1 can, 2 can, 3 can, 4 can, 4 can, 5 can, comma 9 can. Perfect. Let's go to the next one, 25. For 25, who can? This, 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 till here, not 30. So for 25, 
actually I can take all the elements and I can take 11. Do you see a pattern? You do. You do. If 1 and 2 can form a pair with 6, I'll repeat. If 1 and 2 can form a pair with 6, they can also form a pair with 13. Why? Please hear me out properly. The reason is, 13 is greater than, 13 is greater than 6. So all the elements that form a pair with 6, will also form a pair with 13, will also form a pair with 21, will also form a pair with 25. Because if 6 is greater than someone, 13 is bound to be, 21 is bound to be, 25 is bound to be. So I'll try to use this analogy, that the same elements can be reused. If you see same elements are being reused, I'll try to form, trying to use this. Because as of now, what I'm doing is, for 6, I'm trying to find the keys. For 9, I'm trying to find, so I'm iterating throughout, which might end up taking a lot of time. So this is where, because it is sorted, I'll end up using a very simple formula. Not a formula, rather a uh, iterative technique. For 6, let's see till which we can have an answer. This one can. This one can. And this one cannot. So I'll stop here. I'll stop here. I checked for 1, it can. For 2, it can. Like I'll check for this condition. 6 is greater than twice of 1. 6 is greater than twice of 2. 6 is greater than twice of 3. So I stop. I stop here. So for 6, I stopped here. Can I say I will take 2 more, two to my answer because of these two elements? I can. So I've taken. Next, I'll move to 13. Now remember, you don't need to start checking from the first again. No need. Straight away start from 3. Straight away start from 3. Okay. For 13, 3 cross 3. Yes. For 13, th uh, sorry, for 13, 2 cross 3. For 13, if I go here, 2 cross 4. For 13, if I go here, 2 cross 4. For 13, if I go here, 2 cross 5. If I go here, 13, 2 cross 9. No. So we stop here. We stop here. It's not possible. So I go check, 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 and this out. And this is where it comes out to be not possible. So all these elements are apparently possible. So how many elements do you get now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 added to the answer. Perfect. Let's move to the next 21. Let's see for 21. Again, see for 21, you do not need to start from the first. You can straight away start from 9. You don't need to start from 1. You can straight away start from 9. For 21, 2, 9, yes. Let's move. For 21, 2, 11, no. So you stop here. You stop here and you can say 9 can be taken. So apparently 7 elements this time. Perfect. Let's move to the next. 25. For 25, 2, 11, yes. So you move ahead. For 25, 2 cross 13, no. So you stop. So you moved ahead and you stopped here. So apparently this time, 8 more elements. I'm done. So for every element, I figured out it can, like how many elements can it form a pair with? And this will be my answer. The total will be my answer. Because those many pairs I can form from the left and from the right. Quite simple. It wasn't that tough. So this is what we will try to implement in the merge shop. Why? Because both the parts are sorted. And if you remember, where did we have sorted arrays? Right? Because the starting arrays definitely might not be sorted. So we know one thing for sure. When we break them down in merge shop, we get sorted parts. So if for every sorted part, if for every sorted part, I can compute the answer. The overall answer will be my answer. Similar to what we did in count inversions. Got this logic? So instead of relying on two pointers, I slightly changed the two-pointer technique, right? So now let's come back to our original problem. Now we did solve a different problem where we were given two sorted arrays. So if I have the original array, how can I take them to a portion where they have two sorted arrays? The best is to perform a merge shot because it divides, 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 and then it auto converts them to two sorted arrays. So let's try to do it. So first, I'll try to break it down into two portions. And this portion will be 40, 25, 19, and 12. And the right will be 9, 6, 2. Let's try to solve the left part first, and then we can solve the right part. So this will be 40, 25, whereas this will be 19 and 12. Let's try to solve this. This will be 40 and 25. So let's first 
solve the left part and then we will try to solve this. So we have 40 and 25. So if I try to write them separately, 40 and 25. Just try to map this to this problem. Isn't it the same? Two sorted arrays, find me out the number of pairs. Okay, let's try. We stand here for 40. It's 25. 40 greater than 2 of 25. No. So we stop here. We stop here. How many elements before that? No. So zero pairs. Let's move. So apparently we got zero pairs when we take 40 and 25 as two separate arrays. Perfect. But this step is done. This is a different step. This is not the same step. Please, please remember this. This is not the same step as merge. Once you have done this, then you, de uh, then you do the normal step of merging, which is basically 40 and 25, which is smaller. 25, you take it and then you take the 40. This is a completely different step. Please, please remember that this is a completely different step. So I've got 25 and 40. So this time what I'll do is I will go back and I'll try to change it to 25 and 40. Perfect. So the left portion is done. Now let's go to the right portion. From the right portion, we can again go ahead and split it to 19 and 12. Perfect. And if I again try to write it separately because I will have to come back. So whenever you're coming back from the more shot, you know you're merging it. But before merging, you perform one small step before merging. Again, try to map it to the same problem we solved. For 19, let's try to find it out. Can 25 be? No, it cannot be. So apparently anything before 12, like there are no numbers, so zero base again. Done. Our step is done. Do the merge step. So on merging, you'll get 12 and 19. So this will be 12 and 19. So I've merged it. Perfect. Merged. What's the next step? This left and this right, because both of them are solved. Try to merge them. So before merging, we will perform our step. So let's write them 25, 40. Again, try to map it to our problem. Can I map it to our problem? Yes, I can. Why? Because this is the left sorted array. This is the right sorted array. Let's try to map them. So for 25, if I try to figure it out, can 12 be possible? 25 greater than 2 twice of 12. Yes, possible. So I'll move to the next. Can 19 be possible? 25 greater than twice of 19. No. So I stop here. It's not possible. So everything before 12, very important. Everything before 12 is possible. So I'll add 1 to my answer. I'll add 1 to my answer. Perfect. Let's go for 40. For 40, 40 greater than twice of 90. I'm like, yes, possible. So let's move it. And we are running out. We are we ran out of numbers. Since we ran out of numbers, can I say? Can I say for sure, since we ran out of numbers, for 40, there will be these two numbers. So two more. And then we will run out of 40 as well. Done. Our step is done. Once your step is done, you simply perform the merge step. And in merging, you'll get 12, 19, 25, 40. You just perform the merge step, which is in the merge shot. No need to do anything different. Just perform the merge shot. 12, 19, 25, 40. So I can see that I have solved the left portion. Now it's time that we go ahead and in the recursion, solve the right portion. So this will give me 9 and 6. And this will give me 2. Perfect. What's the next step? 9 and 6. 9 and 6. Again, try to map it into the similar uh, zones. Because there are two sorted arrays for 9. This is not possible. So we stop here. 0 pairs. And it's over. So just quickly merge them. Let's quickly merge them. I'm going faster now. 6 and 9. And over here we have a single element. So let's try to again do the same job. 6 and 9. Left array. Left sorted array rather. 2. The right sorted array. Let's standard 6. Can 2 be possible? 6 greater than twice of 2. Possible. So we'll take it and we'll move forward. There are no further elements. So if there are no further elements, this is just one element on the left. And thereby I can say that this particular one element is possible. So I'll take one to my answer. Perfect. And then I'll try to move it. And when I try to move it, again, there are no further elements to compare. So I'll just take that one element, which is there, which is plus one. And I can say my step is done. Once my step is done, you can merge them. So let's go ahead and merge them. Let's go back and try to merge them. So you'll get 2, 6, 9. Perfect. I've merged them. What's the next step that you'll do? You have this and this. 
we will go back and try to merge them as well so let's try to merge them you have 12 19 25 40 and over here you have 2 6 9 let's try to perform our operation we are starting at 12 so let's quickly start from 2 let's check is can 12 comma 2 be a pair can it be it can be why because 12 is greater than twice of 2 so it is possible let's move ahead can 12 comma 6 be a pair the answer is no why because 12 is not greater than twice of 6 so it cannot be a pair so everything before 6 which is 1 yes there will be one element which can be a pair so just add one to your answer once you have done that you can move it to 19 at the moment you move to 19 you start comparing 9 greater than twice of 6 yes that's possible so you move ahead and you compare 19 greater than twice of 9 yes that is possible so you move ahead and you finish right you finish and when you finish for 19 you can see all the three elements can form a pair so what you do is you go ahead and add 3 to your answer very good next you go to 25 and you see there are no numbers to compare you have already finished if you have already finished all of these three numbers can be apart so you'll again add 3 to it and then going ahead you'll move to 40 again all of the numbers are finished so you'll add up 3 and then you'll end up once you have ended your job is complete your small job is complete and if your small job is complete try to merge it so on oh uh -huh, my bad uh -huh. so on merging what you can do is you can merge them and you'll get 2 6 9 12 19 25 40 and once you've done this you can add them up 3 4 5 6 and there's 9 so 15 if you remember initially we got 15 and this is what the merge short algorithm will also give you again i'll not be reiterating on the fact that why does merge short give you the answer of all pairs because i've already explained that in the problem count inversions it's because it's very simple because 40 and 25 within themselves have got it so now they are looking for the right and when they have got it now they'll look for the right so it's basically that concept that we have used in the count inversions so we have pretty much solved it so basically what we have to do is we have to perform our single step before the merge so we have to write a function which does it so let's quickly go back and try to probably write that function so let's probably think it as a more short thing and if you remember if you remember in the more short this is usually low this is usually mid this is usually mid plus one and this is usually high you know right more short when you are doing a more short this is your left portion of the array and this is your right portion of the array again more short has to be clear it has to be in your head then only you'll understand this this is your left portion of the array and this is your right portion of the array you're trying to figure out the pairs between them right because the left is sorted and the right is sorted so what we can do is we can say for i equal to low and it can go ahead till mid because for every number we have to find our answer for every number we have to find our answer and we can keep counter as zero and inside this we'll try to write our logic let's try so initially i'm over here six what am i trying to do i'm trying to figure out like is one possible yes it is is two possible so i'm trying to figure out in the right so i know the right will always start from mid plus one the right will always start from mid plus one so let's try to figure out so i'll be like why and i know the right will go ahead till this portion till it's lesser than equal to high it will go and at the same time i know one thing let's let's keep on going if it is correct if the condition is correct if the condition is correct let's keep on going right if the condition is correct so for here one is correct so let's go for here two is correct let's go for three it is wrong if you see for six three is incorrect because six greater than two of three this will be wrong this will be wrong so you stop and apart from that you just keep going and it will stop at this three whenever it's not possible so when you are stopping at this for six how many elements two elements can form a pair and if you are standing here which is your right how will you get the number of elements on the left quite simple you say count equal to count because previous count plus you say right minus mid plus one that will give you the number of elements which are here quite simple and at the next time what will happen this will move here which is 13 and this time right stands here and checks for 3 and it says yes then it moves to 4 then it says yes then it moves to 4 says yes and moves to 5 says yes then it moves to 9 says no and the while loop stops 
So when the right goes here, this time the number of elements will be this and you can easily subtract and get it and eventually it will keep on moving. So this is the function that you have to write that will give you the number of pairs. And the overall count for every, every, every merge will be your answer. So let's quickly try out the problem again. You can find the problem link in the description and please, please make sure that you try out the problem from the link in the description itself. So going back to the sheet, I know I'll be requiring merge chomp. So I'll go to the article and I'll try to uh, just pick up the code. So this is the code that we have written in the merge sort video. You can find the Java code over here. So going here, what I'll do is I'll simply copy paste this because that is the merge sort algorithm. I know I've been given an array and an n. So let's quickly call this merge sort with the array 0 and n minus 1. So merge sort will be sorting it. I know one thing before the merge, I have to perform my magic. So maybe count pairs and I'll pass on the array, the low, the mid and the high. And let's try to write down this count pairs. So void count pairs. And this will be taking the array the low, the mid and high. Again, can be like, instead of writing a separate function, you can also write it inside the merge, but that is not, not a good practice. Try to write a cleaner code. So this is where I have to count the code. So count the base rather. So what I'll do is I'll keep a global variable just so that you understand it easily. Now what I'll do is, I know one thing, if you remember the pseudo code, we always started from low because I have to go through every variable, everything on the left array. And I will be going on till mid. This is something which we know for sure. And if you remember, we had a right that always started from mid plus one. And what did we write inside? While this right is lesser than or equal to high. And then this right or rather a of i is greater than twice of a of right. It's perfect. Let's go ahead and move right. And once this is done in the count, all the left elements to the right, which is bit plus one. Please add them. And once you've done this, this should be counting all the pairs. And eventually, you can go ahead and return the count. Will this run? This should, because this will end up counting, like this will make sure that everything is counted. Let's quickly see if we missed up something. Yeah, we missed up. This will be array. This will be array. Perfect. Let's quickly run it up again. Should be running fine. Yeah, runs fine. But we're using a global variable which is not a good practice. So let's quickly get rid of this. And let's quickly convert this into an int. And let's have an int count equal to zero. And let's have this return count. So every time you have two arrays, you have two arrays every time, the most short is called. And those two arrays are merged. And before that you're counting. So maybe count every time you're counting it. So we can keep a count variable here, similar to what we did in count inversions. Convert this into integer and for every every merge that you're calling it will definitely return you a count it will definitely return you a count right so that count has to be added so every re returned count every returned count from every single merge shot plus the current one so basically what i'm saying is for this one sorry aha my bad for this one and for this one i will be merging them but before this they gave an answer they gave an answer also, they give an answer. So please add these things and please add these things. And then only you can come over here. So it's basically, please add the bottom ones and then you can add the current merge. And eventually you can return this. So this time, instead of having a global variable, I can go ahead and return this particular thing. This will definitely distort the array. Make sure that you mention that to the interviewer as well. Okay, anything problem? Okay, this will be written count, which is basically zero if it runs out of the boundary. Once we have done this, let's quickly submit this and see if it is running fine. Should be fine. I am assuming it is fine. So what is the time complexity if I ask you? Can I say the time complexity will be? I know one thing. Login is for the divisions that you do. Like, because you divide. And B go of N was for the merge operation. So I'm now doing another operation, including the merge, before the merge shop. So what is that another operation? That is nothing but this one. How much time is it? Like on a naked eye, it might look like a big O of N and another big O of N. But it is not. Why? Because we did an optimization. For a 6, we went for 2 elements. For a 13, we again restarted from here and we went on till here. For 
21 we really started from here we went down here for 25 we went on till this so it's like we are not always for 6 we are not always doing this for 13 we are not always doing this for 21 we are not always doing this for 25 we are not always doing this so thereby calling this as big of n will be a wrong it will be wrong so thereby if i carefully analyze 1 2 3 4 this one so that's like big of n1 right and can i say this is like every time you touch everything once all the elements are touched once so it's n2 because first time might be this much next time might be this much next time might be this much next time must be this much. so the while loop overall overall runs for n2 so can i say n1 plus n2 which is the equivalent of the merge whatever merge was taking can i say this because merge also does the same thing it goes through every element individually and merges it and over here we are doing the same going through every element individually so and i can say easily it's 2l log n because we are doing kind of similar merge kind of a thing but in a other fashion and what about the space complexity big of n for the merge and we are distorting the array please mention that to the interview because you have to tell to the uh, tell it to the interview that hey i'm distorting your array so in case you have a problem with it i can take a copy and solve it so you have to mention that to the interviewer so that he knows that you're still aware of this thing that you're distorting the input given and it's very important to tell to the interview so once you're done with this the interviewer will be happy with you and he'll hire you so uh jokes apart uh not jokes it's a reality so going back to the sheet i can say that this one is done as well so we're done with the reverse pairs as well i hope you understood this problem this is a very very tough problem so you have to know it beforehand don't worry like you won't be able to invent this algorithm in the interview itself so you have to solve these kind of problems beforehand so if you understood this video entirely please 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 make sure that you like this video if you're new to our channel what are you waiting for hit that subscribe button man we keep on producing these kind of videos on our channel every now and then so please do consider subscribing to us and if you haven't followed me on instagram twitter linkedin the links will be in the description with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in some other video till then bye bye take care Whenever your heart is broken.